Sequential backcasting is a new method where we try to estimate the impact of a specific technology on a defined system. In sequential backcasting, we divide the development towards one specific expected scenario into a sequence of phases and then look at how what's needed for each phase to, to happen. We find one logical path from where we are today to that expected scenario. The scenario is estimated by answering the question, what would the specific system look like in a 10 to 20 year perspective if we fully utilize the technology we already have today? One could say that we forecast the scenario based on existing technology and then stepwise backcast the development to that scenario. The steps of the methods are, first we create the scenario, then we analyze the scenario, we define intermediate phases uh, and then when we have done that we describe the phases and identify phase triggers, I mean what's needed for each phase to happen and then after that we can also estimate the timing for each phase. Once we have done that we kind of have our picture of the future, we have, the, we have a map of the landscape, the future landscape and once we have that we could use that map for different purposes. The first step Creating the final scenario or the final phase may in many cases be quite challenging. Answering the question what a specific system will look like in a 10 to 20 year perspective if we fully utilize the technology we already have today demands a lot of knowledge about the specific technology and about the system that we address. The scenarios that we make, of course there has to be a rather big difference from where we are today, otherwise there's no point of doing this backcasting exercise. It also should be uh, easy to communicate or possible to communicate and understand because we need to involve a lot of people in this process. There should also be a clear link between the technology delta that we address and the specific scenario. Also it should be reasonable that we have this 10 to 20 year perspective. The scenarios that we do may be about a number of different things. It may be about the delivery of packages to our homes with drones. It may be how we fully utilize uh, Internet of Things in the health sector, uh, higher education, fully utilizing online education and MOOCs like this one, uh, 3D printing in our homes, etc. The first time I used this methodology was in 2007 to understand how going digital would change the TV distribution and TV industry. And to be honest, we got a lot of things quite right. Once we have this first draft of a scenario, we need to analyze that one and we need to, to um, get all involved to reflect upon that specific scenario. Involved may be uh, the, a management team or a research team or a team uh, investing, etc. Those that later on should use this map to take decisions. We need to get all to reflect upon what may support this scenario or what may work against the scenario. Or, and we also collect all other relevant comments that are maybe neither or, or uh, general concerns about this development. Once we have done that, we define the intermediate phases. We divide the development from where we are today to the final scenario into a sequence of phases. Uh, for the examples given before, it may usually be enough with one intermediate phase. We then have the, uh, the present, the intermediate phase, and then this, this final phase or scenario. And the intermediate phase may be more of an experimental phase uh, regarding the technology, or it may include stuff like uh, the market, first market introduction of that technology. And in the final phase, we have then the full utilization of the new technology. Once we have this basic framework in place, the different phases, we need to describe each phase in more detail. And we can do that by answering a number of questions, such as who's using this technology, uh, who's driving this development, who has most to gain by this development, who's working against this, uh, thereby has most to lose, uh, what uh, supporting uh, uh, services are needed to get this in place, how are existing players responding, etc., etc. A number of questions like that that can help us to describe each individual phase. Once we have a clear view of two adjacent phases, we can answer um, 
we need to answer the question what what's needed to be able to move from one phase to the other and we call those elements triggers triggers that are needed for us to be able to to jump from from where we are to the next phase and that may for instance be that legislation has to be in place standardization business models uh, the cost level has to be low enough uh, the proof we have to have proven technology insurance trust issues etc all those are really important in many cases for us to make this this move to the next phase when we do the detailed description of the phases and try to figure out what the triggers are, we should make use of the initial comments that we got regarding the final scenario. That's the pros and cons and, and concerns. And all those should be possible to be uh, find or be addressed in the phases or, or as triggers in between two phases. Once we have this full picture, we have the phases and triggers, we may estimate the timing. When will a specific phase uh, happen? That will, of course, be, be a kind of guesses, but it's a good exercise to do. So we have a similar view on the timing of each step in this process. When we have the full map, what are we going to do with that? Well, well we can use it to try to figure out what may be uh, opportunities in this future landscape, what may be interesting business roles to take, uh, or how should we position ourselves to be um, today and, and for each uh, individual phase. It may be regarding uh, investment strategies or strategies in general, uh, etc. There are a number of ways to use this map. But So what we do is we, we, we try to figure out the impact of technology and we try to prepare ourselves for what may happen and also to take advantage of the expected transformation that will happen in that specific system which may be society or an industry or a market.